Hello everyone, I'm Peter Weygang. I am the Secretary of the Citizens for Direct Democracy. Uh, this is another one of the videos which we are making to inform you about certain situations which are of great concern to us and also we believe to you. Uh, this pair of videos will deal with the question of the freedom of information and how it affects us. The first video, which is this one, will deal with a particular instance and we go through the whole process and we raise some very important questions as we do it. The second one, it deals with the legal position and you'll be very surprised to find the power that the people have to get information and how little power the city has to stop it. So let's go through this first part one. A major concern with everybody in the city of Kawartha Lakes is the fact that the size and cost of the city of Kawartha Lakes bureaucracy continues to increase. It increases at an enormous rate and it could well go to the planets and beyond if we don't soon stop it. Why we are interested in the cost of the bureaucracy is because the councillors don't seem to have any idea of the consequences of hiring a new executive. Let's take this example. One new executive at 100,000 a year, he probably worked for 30 years, retired for 25, these are probably on the low side, and if you work that out, that costs $4.5 million. That is long-term debt, which is assumed as soon as you hire a senior executive. It is a debt which may last for 40 or 50 years, and is a debt that is chargeable to the taxpayer. And it is so long that it will be your grandchildren who will thank you for lack of doing something about this. Will we ever get a benefit, $4.5 million from an executive? Certainly not. But that isn't the worst part. We will have 108 people already on the sunshine list. But the formation of the city of Kwartha Lakes, there were just two. Once again, if you do the calculations here, you'll see that these people will incur a debt on our shoulders of half a billion dollars. That is an astronomic sum, and I suggest that it is a sum that the taxpayers of the city of Kawartha Lakes will never be able to pay. So, what happens when we want to discuss these matters with the staff of the city? Well, first of all, they don't want to see anything at all. They certainly don't want to see any facts. They don't want to see our facts that predict this gloomy vision of the future. And they don't really tell us what they want to do. We have never heard them say how precisely they are going to redeem these huge debts. And when we come forward with suggestions or questions, they simply cover their ears. This is what freedom of information is right now in the city of Kawartha Lakes. Now, it just happened that the mayor addressed these problems in his New Year's message. Take a good look at this document. At one time, you could find it on a Google search. It's no longer there. It's been transferred to the city's new web browser where it has suddenly disappeared. I am very concerned that several of the things that I wanted to find in order to do research are now no longer available. So anyhow, what he says down here, as repeated here, this is actually what he said. Staffing is at an optimum level. A benchmarking analysis has confirmed that we are running a competitive staffing model for service delivered. That was my first question. So this is about staffing, one of my concerns. So there is a benchmarking analysis somewhere, a document written by some experts, no doubt. Then we carry on. We have committed over one million 
dollars in payroll and benefit reductions. So he is saying that the payroll has decreased for this year's budget. Now let's actually see what happens. <clears throat> we decide to get the goods on this, so we want to ask some questions. The first thing to do is to get this form and then fill it out and send it in with some money and they will or will not give us any information, usually not. Theoretically they have 30 days to comply, that has yet to happen. We started these investigations last October. So these are the questions then. The Mayor says, a benchmark analysis has confirmed etc. What do we ask for? Please send a copy of that analysis. I'd really like to see it. And identify the persons who did the analysis. You see, if it's somebody in the staff who did the analysis, well, it will make a rosy picture, won't it? If I do the analysis, it might be entirely different. Now he says, we have committed over $1 million in payroll and benefits reductions. But we know that they've hired people how can you reduce the payroll while you're still hiring people? So we asked if those savings were produced by a reduction in staff, then provide the number of staff who were given a pink slip. We would like to hear that they are reduced in staff in order to solve the gross financial problems that are being created. Now, if the savings were by reducing everybody's salary, which we know they were not. But if they were, let us know. And in any case, tell us who were in fact hired in the last 12 months or so. So these were the questions which come from the Mayor's statements in his letter. And these are the questions we want answered. Now, it happened that we went to the town hall meeting in Valencia and Steve took a video and I raised that question and you'll be able to hear what the mayor said and you will be able to determine whether he gave a clear, concise and logical answer to my question or whether we just once or more heard some fuddle duddle. Yes sir. Uh, yeah, you said that you committed over a million dollars in payroll and benefit reductions in the, this year's budget. This year, yes. Yeah. Um, the question is, how was that done? Because in the private sector you would laid <coughs> people off or you put some full-time on part-time, you'd have other strategies. And I was asking how in, exactly did that happen? Did you lay off staff? Or uh, what? We have made some changes to our, to our staffing complement. We've moved some positions around. We found over the last couple of years, again, as part of the core service review, we had areas in our municipality where we had we were overstaffed. We had other areas in our municipality, based on our service levels, where we were understaffed and we wanted to do a better job. So part of that was shifting, you know, shifting some employees around. We have reduced some some people in different positions uh, as we find technology and find efficiencies. The majority of what you're talking about this year, the million dollars, came out of our operating budget from what we call it's not the proper term, but gapping in salaries. There's always a budget um, when we either an employee leaves or retires, and there's a gap. They're budgeted for the whole year. You know, they're making whatever seventy thousand dollars is their budget for the year. If if they if that person retires in, in December or sorry that person retires in June, and we don't hire a new person to replace until September, then there's a four month gap there. And so we've gone in and we figured out our gapping from our, our total payroll. And we were able to take, it was an extra million dollars there on gap. It's a very general sort of explanation I'm trying to give you, but it's a gapping is what it is. And then we take it out and it was there. Um, and a lot of, it's not as cut and dry as you think, because a lot of times when we have a vacancy, other employees have to do that work and fill in, especially if it's a mandated position. So just because they're not there making that, that salary doesn't mean that money's not going toward that position. So that's where it came from, as opposed to laying off across the board. So Okay, so now you've seen the Mayor's address. There were indeed people hired. Here they are. These were the last latest list from 
one of their uh, publications that I managed to get at. They're all, apart from this poor chap down here who's only getting 48,000, they're all senior staff with handsome salaries. What I did is I said, what's the low in the range and what's the high? So Director of Corporate Services, whatever that is, could have $127,000 up to 148000 I added these together. I noted that I didn't include any health and insurance benefits. And that will cost us $40 million. So when council or staff approve the hiring of these people, this is the tax burden on us. Now let's look at just three of these positions that they're getting. They're hiring this librarian, or they have done so, and they're just about to replace him. His salary is now from 105 to 119,000. Now apparently, when all the libraries of the Victoria County were grouped under one management, it became a huge job. And it couldn't be done in this new manager's 37 and a half hour week. So it now requires two area supervisors and three library assistants. Bearing in mind that these libraries, in some cases, are over 100 years old. They have been run successfully for decades by people in the local community who had the required experience and qualifications. We don't need any of this stuff at all to give us a successful local library. Now, manager of roads operations. Well, every one of the former municipalities had roads, it had bridges, it had parks, it had all those facilities. But when you lump them together, all of a sudden you need somebody to look after the roads. But my experience is that the foreman, the roads foreman, he knew everything. He knew the culverts, the overhanging trees, the bad spots in Wendell. And the local councillors themselves and their families and the staff drove over those roads, drove over those bridges. They knew what was happening. They managed those small communities by knowing, individually knowing. We now have councillors who probably have no idea what is happening sort of five or ten miles down the road. And these councillors, they managed by walking about. They could see things happening and they could take the appropriate steps. Here again, Superintendent of Parametric Services. They make it sound as if we had nothing before the invention of the city of Kawatha Lakes. We always had ambulances which would take people to hospital. And we always had firefighters come and put out fires in our homes. And that was going on for decades before the city of Kawatha Lakes was invented. So these things that we now have are completely redundant and they've been created because the city of Kawatha Lakes has created them, not because they were necessary. <clears throat> this one is another example of what happens when we try and get information. For some reason, we have consultant services in the city. That in itself is amazing. Because we have a very, very highly paid, very highly qualified executive. Why on earth we need consultants at all is completely beyond me. They were in various areas, planning, etc. And they cost various amounts. I actually asked for the whole previous year. And I was told that that information was so tied up within the complexities of their computer system that it was unobtainable. And if they, I insisted, it would cost me a fortune in time for them to search through things. Now, look at this. Asset management. We looked at the asset management in the, the first two videos. And it has been charged in the first quarter of this year $16,000. Bearing in mind that the manager of this group has a doctorate in economics. In fact, I've read part of his thesis. Why on earth does this person need a consultant at all? 
It is absolutely incongruous. So we are saying, get these people to get their jobs done by themselves, or get them out of the way and just go straight to consultants and save all their salaries. Now, this one really hurts. This is our typical bureaucrat. And bureaucrats live for a very long time. Their average age is 88. Why do they live for a very long time? Because they get very handsome salaries. They eat very well. They have plenty of fruit. And, of course, they have nice holidays to recuperate from their work. And they have an expenses paid health program. And they can look forward to a secure and long retirement. That is why they live a long time. Who provides that for them? These people. These people work in, in harsh jobs. Dust in their lungs. Danger of broken limbs. So we have a whole undercurrent of workers in the city of Kuwata Lakes who are doing hard jobs in order to pay excessive taxes so that we can have these people living the good life. I'm saying that we must reduce these to the bare minimum and we must pay the minimum going rate to get them. And that is if we need any of them at all, which I doubt. So, none of those positions were needed in the former communities of Victoria County. We know that. We know they weren't there. But big government always has this problem. Creates a big bureaucracy. It's hugely expensive. Democracy hardly exists. And service satisfaction decreases. So, what we want to have is some support for our movement to replace this system in direct democracy, we know that smaller is smarter when we all share the wisdom of crowds. I hope you will tune in when the next part of this is videoed because that is a very important one to see. Thank you very much. So, there you have it. Um, the, shall we say, a good look into the freedom of information as interpreted by the city of Quartha Lakes. We hope you found that it is informative, and uh, if you did, then we would like you to subscribe and support us in any way you can. And please tune in for part two. Thank you.